Hello, and welcome to LSET Tech Byte. Today, we're going to dive into creating a simple yet effective flashcard app using the power of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Flashcards are a fantastic way to study and memorize information, and by the end of this tutorial, you'll have your very own interactive flashcard application ready to use. So, let's get started. As you can see, I have a basic HTML structure set up here. We have our usual doctype declaration and HTML tags. The title of our page is Flashcard App. Next, we have a meta tag for the viewport, which ensures that our app looks good and is responsive across different devices. Inside the body tag, we have a container div that wraps our entire app. This helps keep our layout organized. Here, we have a button with the ID Add Flashcard. This button will allow users to add new flashcards to their collection. Next, we have a div with the ID card con. This is where our flashcards will be displayed. Below that, we have a question container with the ID add question card. This is a hidden container that will appear when users want to add a new flashcard. Inside the question container, we have a close button and an error message. The error message will appear if users try to save a flashcard without filling out all the required field. We have two text areas inside the question container, one for the question and one for the answer. Users will type their questions and answers into these fields. Finally, we have a save button that users will click to save their flashcard. Here, we're linking to Font Awesome style sheet. Font Awesome provides us with some great icons that we'll use for our app. We're also linking to a custom style sheet called style.css. This is where we'll define the styles for our flashcard app. At the bottom of our HTML file, we're linking to a JavaScript file called script.js. This is where we'll write the code to make our flashcard app interactive. Let's dive into the CSS code and see how we're styling our flashcard app to make it user-friendly and attractive. First, we have some global styles applied to all elements using the universal selector. We're resetting the padding and margin to zero, setting the box sizing to border box for easier sizing calculations. We're specifying the font family as Arial, Helvetica, Sans Serif for a clean and modern look. We've set the background color of the body to a light gray to create a pleasant backdrop for our app. Inside the A container class, we're defining the width to be 90% of the viewport width with a maximum width of 62.5M, roughly 1000 pixels. This ensures that our app remains responsive and looks good on different screen sizes. The add flashcard con class styles the container for our add flashcard button. We're aligning the button to the right and giving it some padding and styling to make it stand out. We've styled the button element to have a solid dark shade of grey background colour, white text colour, padding for better clickability, and rounded corners for a modern touch. The CardCon class styles the container for our flashcards. We've added some margin at the top for spacing. Here, we're styling the container for adding new flashcards. It's positioned absolutely in the centre of the screen, with a white background, rounded corners, and a subtle box shadow for depth. We're styling the error message to display in red if input fields are empty. The close button with the class FAX mark is positioned at the top right corner of the question container and styled with a red background and white color. Labels are styled with a dark blue color for better readability. Text areas have consistent styling for width, padding, border, and border radius. The focus state is highlighted with a darker border color. Similar to the Add Flashcard button, the Save button is styled with a solid background color, white text, padding, and rounded corners. This styles the container for displaying multiple flashcards in a grid layout. It adds some padding and defines the grid columns for responsive layout. Each individual card has a white background, subtle box shadow, padding, and rounded corners for a clean look.
We're styling the show hide buttons for each flashcard with a solid background color, white text, padding, and rounded corners. The edit and delete buttons are styled with transparent backgrounds, appropriate padding, font size, and color for better visibility. Finally, we have media queries to adjust the layout for smaller screens. This ensures that our app remains functional and visually appealing on devices of all sizes. Let's dive into the JavaScript code and see how we're bringing our flashcard app to life with functionality. We begin by selecting various DOM elements that we'll be interacting with throughout our script. These include the main container, the add question card container, input fields for the question and answer, error message, the add flashcard button, and the close button for the question card. We set up event listeners for the add flashcard button and the close button. When the add flashcard button is clicked, the main container is hidden and the add question card container is displayed. The close button allows users to cancel adding a new flashcard and return to the main view. The submit question function handles the submission of a new flashcard. It checks if both the question and answer fields are filled out. If not, it displays an error message. Otherwise, it adds the new flashcard to the list and clears the input field. The ViewList function dynamically creates a new card element and appends it to the list of flashcards. It displays the question and provides a show or hide button to reveal or hide the answer. Additionally, it adds edit and delete buttons for each flashcard. The modify element function allows users to edit or delete existing flashcards. If the edit button is clicked, it populates the question and answer fields with the existing values, allowing users to modify them. The delete button removes the flashcard from the list. The disable buttons function disables edit buttons while a flashcard is being edited to prevent conflict. And there you have it. We've just covered the JavaScript code that adds essential functionality to our flashcard app. These interactive features empower users to seamlessly create, view, edit, and delete flashcards, elevating their learning experience. If you're finding value in this video, don't hesitate to subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to stay updated with our latest content. Thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you in our next video.